The sad reality is that a lot of men are lost in today's world. What does the future for us look like? I've discovered a man from 100 years ago that might be able to give us some insight as to what we can do with our lost brothers. Napoleon Hill, a man who claims to have spoken to the devil, a man who tried to warn us about the devil's mental traps since the beginning of mankind and how his tactics would trickle into our modern day society if we refuse to take action. How accurate are his claims? Whether or not you find Napoleon Hill credible, I am deeply fascinated by some of the philosophical principles that I want to share with you today that stem from Hill's literary works, outwitting the devil. Principle one, those who drift are as good as dead. In the words of the devil, a drifter is one who accepts whatever life throws in his way without making a protest or putting up a fight. He doesn't know what he wants from life and spends all of his time getting just that. A drifter is one who is too lazy mentally to use his own brain. That is the reason I can take control of people's thinking and plant my own ideas in their minds. This philosophy hits hard when you realize that so many of our lives are filled to the brim with not only ways to distract ourselves, but to wander aimlessly with no purpose in life and then people wonder why so much of our generation and these young guys have no purpose in life. You hear about this all the time. And there is anything I would tell my younger self, aim at something, anything. Redirect your focus. Stop wandering around like a little lost boy. If you are someone who is lost in life, you need to kill this habit of drifting. This is what is called the definiteness of purpose. In the words of Napoleon Hill, there is one quality which one must possess to win, and that is definiteness of purpose. The knowledge of what one wants and a burning desire to possess it. Principle two, public education influences no independent thinking. I know some of you relate to this, but to be honest, I learned little to nothing valuable in school. Everything that I learned that was of substantial value was always outside of the classroom. I need to shed some light on a statement that was made in the 1930s that honestly, in my opinion, still rings true to this day. In the words of Napoleon Hill, children are sent to school to make credits and to learn how to memorize, not to learn what they want of life. Think of young children during kindergarten and first grade. They are enthusiastic and volunteer for everything, raising their hands and being excited to learn. Now fast forward 10 years and think about those same children as high school students. Absolutely never volunteering or asking a question. They have disengaged from the learning process. What happened to these children? They perceive that making an error will subject them to ridicule and scorn. They are taught that the solutions to all problems and conflicts lie not in their own hands and minds, but in the hands and minds of the teacher. The children are thus discouraged from independent thought and indoctrinated with the concept that they are incapable of resolving their own problems. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm not grateful for all of the years I was under the education system because I know some countries do not have this privilege. I did have some of the greatest memories of my life while on a school campus. In hindsight, this is something that happened to me. I started losing the interest in learning and it wasn't until after school that I made me realize learning can be fun and failing is not necessarily a bad thing. The education system indoctrinates in us this mentality that if you get A's, you are a success and if you get D's, you're not. And this couldn't be farther from the truth. The grading system has nothing to do with how smart or creative or talented you actually are. The education system in America has been outdated and has has been around since the 17th century, nearly 400 years ago. Students are still taught in a basic manner that learning is based off of two things, repetition and memorization. How are we supposed to thrive as individuals when we all have different learning styles? And all of these learning styles are put into one box, a box that fails to meet the requirement of real world learning. I think the reason this is dangerous that these systems haven't been challenged is because it's sad. There are people that genuinely think because of their grades that they're not going to be successful in the real world. In the words of Napoleon Hill. Teach children that all schoolhouses and all textbooks are elementary implements that may be helpful in the development of their minds, but that the only school of real value is the great university of life, wherein one has the privilege of learning from experience. Principle three, the glorification of vices in the 21st century. It's very easy to believe that drugs, sex, and alcohol are the greatest highs in life. But the truth is, it's very hard to convince someone that doesn't have these experiences under the belt that it's meaningless after a while. I know there's this huge pressure to take the bait in all this, but I think it's a reality check when you realize it for yourself that these experiences leave you feeling empty handed and no amount of pleasure can fill a void. It can only suppress it. It really makes you question what is meaningful to you in life because we've been sold this lie that these short term fixes are the road to prosperity. And I'm all for a good time, don't get me wrong, but how sad is it when we turn to these meaningless pursuits after some time and yet we're still not happy. In the words of Napoleon Hill, teach children that cigarettes, liquor, narcotics, and overindulgence in sex destroy the power of will and lead to the habit of drifting. Do not forbid these evils, just explain them. You may not know it, but cigarettes break down the power of persistence.
lessons. They destroy the power of endurance. They destroy the ability to concentrate. They deaden and undermine the faculty of imagination. These are all tactics that inhibit people from using their minds to the greatest of their ability. In the words of the devil, do you know I have millions of people, young and old, of both sexes, who smoke two packages of cigarettes a day? That means I have millions of people who are gradually destroying their power of resistance. One day, I shall add to their habit of cigarette smoking and other thought destroying habits until I shall have gained control of their minds. I find it interesting in this book that the devil claims to have his hand in all forms of influence, including media and politics. But what scares me today is that if you listen to a lot of rap music, you'll find that these modern day rappers are preaching the same message from a book that was written a hundred years ago. So my final question to you is how much of your thoughts are yours? Truly yours? Because this book has made me realize that whether or not this conversation between Napoleon Hill and the devil actually happened, there are some points in this book that could be true. And I encourage you to ponder on these claims. So leave me a comment below and let me know what you guys think. I'll see you on the next one.